Hey guys, this is Tony from Sykes Harley Davidson and today I'm going to be telling you everything that you need to know about the 2020 Softail Breakout. First impressions of the Breakout. The Breakout is the embodiment of modern American chopper culture. This bike is incredible and the styling on it is fantastic. You've got a 21 inch wheel in the front there, you've got a Milwaukee 8 114 motor that pulls like an absolute train. It's long, it's low and then you've got this fat back end on it and people love the look of the breakout. To so many people, when you think of American custom cruisers, this is what they think. So let's start from the very front. As I mentioned a minute ago, we've got this 21 inch front wheel which builds into that sort of custom bike scene. It's rare to see a 21 on a stock bike and it really builds into the aggressive lines of this bike. You've got a blacked out cast wheel with offset spokes. As you move up the bike, you've got these big beefy looking forks and then they lead into these really nice triple trees. These blacked out triple trees against the polished fork tubes give you a nice bit of contrast and it just sets the bike off. I really like the headlight on the breakout. I think it looks really, really slick. It gives you a really, really nice flowing feel as you come across the top up to the bars. The breakout features these nice low drag bars, again, building into that aggressive riding position. The risers on the breakout are these really cool chrome risers and I love the way that Harley's taken some cues from that custom bike scene and they've integrated the speedo into the top clamp of the risers so it gives you the impression that there's no speedo at all. It gives you a really nice clean set and look at handlebars. The tank on the breakout gives it a really nice flowing line. It's a high tunnel tank so it gives you a real nice bulldog stance coming from the bars down towards the seat and then you've got that back end there. This is of course the vivid black and I like the fact that the vivid black paint option still has this really nice pinstripe on there and that little detail gives you a little bit of pop and it draws your eye in and it stops the paintwork from just being flat black. That of course brings us on to the engine. So the breakout features the Milwaukee 8 114 engine. I've said it a thousand times before, I'll say it a thousand times again. If you've not ridden anything with a Milwaukee 8, you need to ride something with a Milwaukee 8. There is no substitute for it. It's a fantastic engine. It's smoother than the twin cam, it's got more power than the twin cam, and it's more efficient than the twin cam. From a styling perspective, the breakout is all about the bling. So you've got the chrome cam cover, transmission cover, you've got chrome rock covers, and then you've got those highlighted engine fins, which against the wrinkled black, just draw your eye in, but it's not too flashy. And I think the engine on these bikes looks phenomenal. You can't talk about the engine without talking about the exhaust. And personally, I actually really like the line on these um, two into two systems, the shotgun exhaust on the breakout but being a Harley, most people change them anyway, so there are some fantastic aftermarket options out there for the breakout. Coming up from the exhaust, we've got one of the biggest features of the Milwaukee 8 breakout, and that is the external preload adjustment for the rear suspension. People often ask me what the big benefit of the Milwaukee 8 breakout over the older twin cam breakout is, and I always tell them that it all centers around this rear suspension. With the twin cam, you had dual shocks mounted to the bottom of the bike, whereas with the Milwaukee 8, you've got a mono shock under the seat. When Harley was redesigning the frame around that mono shock, they managed to realize a significant weight saving. So overall, the Milwaukee 8 breakout is 12 kilos lighter than the twin cam was. One of the big concerns people had about the twin cam breakout was because of the width of it, especially because it was low down, it was really easy to scrape paint, especially if you were on sharp turns or going around a roundabout. And to put it bluntly, people who weren't used to Harleys didn't like it. If they came from a sportier background, they didn't like the fact that they couldn't crank the bike over as far before things started scraping, and it made them feel uncomfortable on the bike. When Harley redesigned the frame for the Milwaukee 8 breakout, what they did was they kept that impression of that long, low silhouette, but the bike actually sits just a little bit higher and the foot controls are just a little bit narrower. And what that means is that you can now crank the bike much further over than you could on the twin cam without scraping anything. Moving up from the rear suspension, we come up onto the seat. The seat on the breakout is quite nicely scooped and it builds into that aggressive riding position. It gives you great control of the bike, especially with those forward controls. I love the styling of this seat. The double stitching I think works really well and that carries through onto the pillion pad. It's obviously worth mentioning that the full pillion setup is included as standard in this bike. Another nice little detail that I like about the breakout, and it's the same on the fat boy, is that you can actually remove the pillion seat quite easily and it gives you a really nice clean looking fender. So if you want to set this bike up as a solo, all you've got to do is take that pillion seat off. Moving back from the seat, as you can see, we've got these really nice gloss black fender rails and that leads in quite nicely to those gloss black turn signals. Again, you've got that big 240 rear fender on here and Harley's put that nice little pinstripe on there just like they did with the tank and that little bit of detail just draws your eye in and it stops the paintwork from just being flat. Of course, I have to mention that you can get a docking kit for these bikes so then you can have all of your detachable accessories. So whether that's a sissy bar with a passenger backrest, a luggage rack, all of that good stuff is all available. These turn signals are really cool because these are the integrated LEDs that Harley does. So these are your brake, tail light and your turn signals all in one. 
and it gives a really nice clean look to that rear fender. For me personally, I'm not a massive fan of this plastic number plate bracket, and I know that a lot of our customers aren't either. We fit side mount plates on these breakouts all of the time, and I have to admit, I think that when you clean up that back end and show off a bit of that tire, it really gives the bike a much more aggressive kind of look, and it just, with that 240 back end on there, it just looks fantastic. So if I hop on the bike now so you can see what it looks like with someone sitting on it, as you can see, I'm five foot ten, and it's not a massive stretch for me to reach these handlebars. Although these drag bars are quite low and it gives the bike a really nice stance, they're not actually super far stretched out. So I'm still pretty upright here, I'm in a really comfortable position, it's not too aggressive. And it's not a massive reach for me to get to these foot controls either. Even though the brake up comes with forwards, if you're a rider with a shorter inseam, it's not a problem. Because this bike's so low, I'm flat footed on the ground quite comfortably here. It's not a stretch for me to reach these controls, and it's the same for the gear lever on the other side. All right, let's spin around so you can see what she looks like from the other side. Key points to mention about the left-hand side of the brake out. On the front wheel, you've got that brake disc and the caliper. And then as we move up, something that's a really important little de detail to note about all of the Milwaukee 8 soft tails is that they've all got this USB charging point just here behind the headstock. This USB charging point is an absolute lifesaver. If you're the kind of person who uses a GPS, or if you have a handlebar mount for your phone, then it's really easy to charge it off here. And if you're like me and you always keep your phone in your pocket, then you can still run a cable from here to your pocket and charge your phone like that. As we come back to the engine, you can see the breakout features this gorgeous chrome primary cover. It gives you that little bit of bling on the left-hand side and I think it sets off the engine quite nicely. You've got that gorgeous look of the V-twin there and I love the fact that Harley's used the ignition coils on here as a feature as opposed to trying to hide them. Because on the Milwaukee 8s you've got twin spark heads, you've got twice as many HT leads and instead of trying to hide them away and run those cables, Harley's framed it as a feature right there as a lot of people do on their custom bikes bang in the middle of the V-twin and it really shows off that left hand side of the engine nicely. Coming to the very back you've got that chrome belt guard and that gives you a really nice little bit of contrast against the blacked out wheels, the black fender and those black fender rails. Alright and that's the left hand side of the bike. Alright guys that's our video, I hope that you enjoyed hearing what I had to say about the 2020 Softail Breakout and if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff so that I can convince my boss it's worth me making these videos. If you're interested in a new breakout, then don't forget Sykes Harley Davidson delivers nationwide within the UK. So no matter where you are, if you're interested in this bike, give us a ring on the number in the description and one of our sales team will be more than happy to help you out with any questions you may have. And I think that's it. So until the next time, ride safe.